and now look to Thierry Bardat to continue the case for the proposition. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, thank you so much for having invited me. It's such a great pleasure and such an honor to speak at this distinguished house. Um, it's, um, it's also very difficult to speak right after such two such brilliant proponents uh, and, and opponent of, uh, of the motion today. Uh, but still, I would like to, um, to start simply by making uh, a, a number of very basic distinctions in this discussion. The previous speaker was talking about Europe is an ideal. And if there are any Europeans in this hall, let them all put their hand to their heart, or whatever they were going to put their hand. And, <laughs> you know, believe in this project. But I think it's very important to state, and of course it's been stated often, but it, it apparently still needs to be, the point needs to be made time and again that Europe is not the EU. Before the European Union was invented, uh, such a thing as Europe existed. There was a concert of nations, there was a republic of letters. Uh, coming from the Netherlands uh, myself, uh, we have been involved in conversations, friendly conversations, friendly engagements, uh, also obviously in the, uh, competition and wars with one another, but uh, the European style movements, for example, the ro Romanticism, Enlightenment, many other uh, style movements have existed and have uh, traveled through uh, Europe and there has been an incredible number of literature of writers and thinkers talking about Europe as an ideal. So it's really not true that the European Union is the first moment in history when we sort of sat down together we're like, oh, well, there's such a thing as Europe instead of just being nations or nationalities. Secondly, uh, this, this talk of before 1945, we had nationalism which engendered wars. I think it's profoundly mistaken of history. The, 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 the Great World Wars, and especially the Second World War, arose out of an ideology, or several ideologies, fascism, national socialism, which are mistakenly understood today as representatives of nationalism. The racism that is the basis of national socialism itself is a universalist doctrine. It's a universalist doctrine, not a national doctrine. The Germans were terrible towards members of their own nation, people that held passport, German passports, whereas they wanted to include into the great German Reich people that were not members of their nation. So the idea that national socialism is a nationalism is profoundly mistaken. Fascism is the same thing. Mussolini tried to recreate the Roman Empire by invading several countries in northern Africa, elsewhere. Uh, so the, 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 the uh, collision, in the words of the previous speaker, between nationalism or, 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 or provincial uh, uh, national, national thinking and, on the other hand, European thinking is mistaken. Indeed, I would even go as far as saying that it's precisely the ambition to supersede national distinctions that brought Europe to so many terrible wars over and over again, it was imperialism, the ambition to conquer other nations, the ambition to supersede one's own borders, one's own limitations, and bring into the, the realm other countries that was the cause of such terrible wars that so terribly disfigured our history and our continent. That said, um, it's very important, I think, to talk about Europe, the European Union, that we're talking about today in rational terms. What, are, what is it exactly, this thing that we're talking about? So we're not talking about the European ideal, nor are we talking about really the origins of wars and peace. We're talking about an organization, an institution that's based in Brussels, that does several things, at least three, I would say. And I would like to focus in my speech on two elements of it. So it's a, it provides an internal market, it tries to facilitate trade. Secondly, it has forced its member states to open their borders to one another. And thirdly, it has forced its member states and all member states, I'm sure you're aware of this, all member states, apart from then Britain, have agreed to adopting, at some, no, declined, at some point or another in the future, the euro currency. So I'm going to talk about the two elements of the European Union that I think are important today, the open borders and the single currency. And the most important thing to understand about this institution, so not about Europe, the 
continent or discussions about historical war and peace, but the presently existing institution that we call the European Union is that it's an, a fundamentally instable institution. The European Union is not a thing that is stable in itself, that we can visit, that we can see, and that will stay more or less the same over the course of the coming years. It's a revolutionary institution that is constantly changing. It's fundamentally unstable and if we want to make a judgment about it, if we want to say whether we like it or we don't like it or whether, which is the real question tonight, it is possible for the European Union to continue to exist over the, over, over the long course of, of years that, that are to come, we need to understand really the course of developments that the European Union, being an unstable organization, will have to take in the coming years. And I'll just walk through a couple of them with you very briefly. The open borders will uh, uh, demand from the, nation, the member states to agree upon a common asylum and immigration policy. Together with that, with a common defense of their shared borders, in the Mediterranean and in, in, uh, in addition to that some form of shared foreign policy. So we're already talking about asylum and immigration policy, shared foreign policy and shared defense policy. Thank you. This, the, euro currency, the euro currency demands from its member states shared fiscal policies, this has already been mentioned before, and also over time convergence, harmonization of several fields of law, uh, fiscal laws, uh, 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 financial laws uh, and bankruptcy laws uh, especially, so private, private legal systems. That means that ultimately we're talking about same uh, one minister of justice, one minister of finance, one minister of foreign affairs, one minister of defense and one um, uh, minister of uh, foreign policy. These are the five elements that we call sovereignty together. This is what a state is. Therefore, the European Union ultimately is going to be a new federal state. There is no other option if, as long as the, the open borders and the single currency will continue to exist. The European Union, therefore, is, uh, is a state in becoming, it's, it's a state that's, that, 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 that's half finished, but it's fundamentally unstable. And therefore, the question whether it can continue to exist de de depends on the question whether or not the European countries, the countries of Europe, will, and the, and the peoples living in it, will ultimately accept this. As the previous speaker has quite brilliantly pointed out, they're never going to do this. The, 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 the national identities are such uh, in Europe and we might like it, as I do, we might not like it, as some of the others do, but it's a fact that we can observe that the resistance towards the European Union will only increase. And therefore, being rational, thinking about the European in rational terms, will bring us to two scenarios, fundamentally, Yugoslavia or Czechoslovakia. These were artificial countries. These were states imposed on several nations, brought together, pressed together into a framework that neither of those peoples wanted and we can either accept this and proceed towards an orderly dismantlement or if we don't accept this history will, ch will, will challenge us, will, 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 will grab us by the neck and will force the downfall of the European Union on us. I would like to uh, urge all of you in any case to agree to the motion tonight that it's untenable as, as it is right now. Thank you.